Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Mr. Doc Two Fan Thirteen here, bringing you yet another video. Uh, my first reaction video in actually, um, how long has it been? Like eight months. My first reaction video in eight months, and here I am reacting to Doctor Who Series Eight, Episode One, Deep Breath, Episode Eight Hundred and One, and the Story in Two Hundred and Forty Two, written by Stephen Moffat and directed by Ben Wheatley. Um, now, first of all, let me just say, I did go to the cinema to see this, in case you haven't seen my previous video. Uh, and it was a great, great atmosphere. The crowd were really, really nice and quiet, thankfully, and paying attention to the episode. It's not like on the world tour where you get screaming fanboys and fangirls. Uh, no, none of that, actually. It was a really nice environment, and uh, we had a... It was nice to hear the laughter of Whovians. Um Particularly the Paternoster Gang. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... What did I think of the episode? I thought this was a great start to uh, Doctor Who Series 8. Not a mas not quite a masterpiece, but you know what? Stephen Moffat didn't do a bad job with this one. Um, I'd say it's the second best of the new series of the uh, Doctor debut stories. It's better than Rose and the Christmas Invasion, but it's not as good as The Eleventh Hour. That will always probably be the best um, Doctor debut episode of the new series, at least, because I think the best one overall would probably be Spearhead from Space, in my opinion. Although, I mean, I watched the recon of Power of the Daleks, and that was, that's one to rival it, so... Uh, yeah, uh, so, I'd say it's my f deep breath, I'm not sure where it comes in Doctor Who debut episodes, but, uh, I'd say there's something like that, but, um, first things first, Peter Capaldi, Great, 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 fantastic performance as, doc as the Doctor. Um, basically, um, what was shown of him in the time of the Doctor was pretty much what we got here. Um, whenever he um, was, um, like, he was just sort of slowly easing into his more dark and serious persona of the Doctor. Uh, like, because most of the time he was quite mad and he had some really, really funny moments. Courtesy of Stephen Moffat's really, really clever dialogue and really, really witty as well. And to be honest, despite the fact that it was 79 minutes, I mean, there were some really long scenes, but it actually went, like the day of the Doctor, it went by a lot quicker than it actually felt it was going at, which is something that I think it really means that you've enjoyed an episode. Now, if you can't tell here by my voice and what I'm saying, I'm being a lot more critical and professional we're talking about the episodes now compared to how I was with like series 7 part 2 and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, and also, Jenna Coleman as Clara, great performance, and finally, finally, Clara actually did something. I don't count the day of the Doctor, or the time of the Doctor, because to be honest, yeah, she did start doing stuff in that, but really... It was all just how, how she meant to the Doctor and how the Doctor meant to her and everything. Basically, their flirty relationship. And, uh, hmm. But yeah, so. Yeah, it was just basically their relationship and everything. And it was, uh, really, really nice how, uh, at the end of the episode. By the way, this may contain spoilers, I forgot to mention. So if you haven't seen the episode and you don't need to be spoiled, just stop watching now. Um, but yeah, it was written by Stephen Moffat and directed by Ben Wheatley. Uh, ben Wheatley's direction was actually really, really good and really, really stylish for the limited setting that he had. It's kind of, he's up there with Farron Blackburn, who also directed The Doctor Who Widow in the Wardrobe and The Wings of Akaten. I like The Wings of Akaten, didn't like The Doctor Who Widow in the Wardrobe, but even so, both of those episodes were beautifully uh, directed with a huge sense of style in their more condensed uh, settings. And that's exactly the same, same thing that Ben Wheatley did here. I mean, all he really had was Victorian London. And the dinosaur, the CGI on that was fantastic. I mean, uh, to be honest, I one of the problems that I had with the episode is that I felt as though the dinosaur should have been in more of it. But, uh, but I mean... You can tell, pretty much, in the live Q&A afterwards, uh, Stephen Moffat actually said that he uh, hadn't written the plot, he had no idea what the episode was going to be about, but he thought of just introducing the Doctor in a very unique way by having him crash land, uh, or basically the dinosaur spit out the TARDIS in Victorian London, and very clever idea, Stephen Moffat, but don't, uh, but to be honest, um, spoiler alert, 
the dinosaur dies in its second scene and uh, it's talking to the doctor and to be honest whenever that happened I felt as though we had a missed opportunity I mean a dinosaur rampaging around Victoria in London I mean it's I mean it's uh, it didn't feel like I mean there was a sense of panic at the beginning but then it just cut straight to night and it felt as though it really could have been done a lot better but despite that uh, there was one other thing I didn't like about this episode uh, the Paternoster Gang. Now, I know I said before that I really like the Paternoster Gang, but um, recently they have actually, I've actually gone off them and I find them more annoying now than I did funny. Uh, Strax was really, really annoying, as usual. And I, in that one scene where they were all trapped, I had my fingers crossed that when he prepared to shoot, he was going to shoot himself by mistake, but of course... It's never going to happen. We all want Strax to die, but he's the new Rory Williams. He can never die. He gets knocked down, but he gets back up again. <laughs> but, yeah, so... Uh, the Paternoster Gang, I mean... Vastra and Jenny, I don't really mind. It's just Strax, who I think is really unnecessary. And basically puts us on times to disgrace. Like, you can't take them seriously. And... Maybe that would have been the case, but back in the time of the Doctor, when they made the actual Sontarans comedic, I could never forgive what Moffat has done to the Sontarans. Seriously, make them serious again like you did in the Sontaran stratagem in the Poison Sky, well, like Helen Reyna did. But anyway, uh, despite all that, it was still a great episode with uh, where we actually got to see Clara do something for once, and... Uh, so just the way she reacted to this new Doctor was really, really intriguing. And the way she responded to Vastra, it's just like... I and mean, it was kind of ruined by Jenny's applause, but... It really, really good stuff from Jenna Coleman as Clara. And, and props to Stephen Moffat for actually writing her so she can do something. And also the way that... Um, now, this is a major spoiler. I mean, I know I said spoilers <laughs> A million times, but this is a major one. If you haven't seen the episode, you don't want to listen to this one. Trust me, because this is a whopper, and uh, pun, in, pun intended. But uh, that scene at the end, where basically, first of all, it was a great explanation, well, half explanation as to how, uh, who the woman in the shop was whenever um, whenever the doctor asked Clara about um, the woman in the shop, he sort of got an answer at the end, who I think, I think that might be the Rani, that woman, but, um, yeah, so, basically, that scene where she was on the phone to the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, and just the way she was saying goodbye to him and hello to the 12th Doctor, Capaldi, it really, really did feel like there was genuinely something there, and also, it feels like now, the blockbuster theme of Series 7 is gone, and the complicated theme, story theme of Series 6 isn't quite there, but it feels more like Series 1 to 5, where we actually have just something linking with the finale. Try and... Okay, okay, right, sorry. Just something that leads into, the like, a clue to the finale, like that woman in heaven who I, once again, like I said, I think is, um... Who I think could be the Rani, but... I'm thinking of uh, later incarnation of River Song, I don't know. But I really liked uh, it. It also sort of feels like a classic series story, like something up from the Sylvester McCoy era, season 25 and 26, that is, where we can actually take this seriously. And Capaldi's Doctor incorporates tons of elements, especially, in my opinion, from Tom Baker and John Pertwee and stuff like that. And you can really, really see some William Hartnell in there as well. He's really grumpy. He's really, really dark and serious, and like the Tenth Doctor, he doesn't really, he doesn't look like the type who'd be given second chances. So he's incorporated some of the best themes from some of the previous Doctors, as well as delivering his own elements to the table. Like he's just simple, straight to the point, a no messing Doctor who will kick your ass. So yeah, that's uh, I'm really impressed by Capaldi's performance and the dialogue the writing that Stephen Moffat has done for him, and the way that Ben Wheatley just directed him. So, yeah. But, overall, I really enjoyed Deep Breath. Uh, 
It had a couple of problems, but overall it was still great entertainment and a really, really good debut story for Capaldi's Doctor. And uh, the next time trailer for Into the Dalek has got me intrigued. Although, to be honest, it looks a bit like Let's Kill Hitler meets Dalek, and I really, really hope it's not that, because Let's Kill Hitler was absolute pants. But, uh, but to be honest, it looks like, um, it does look like it's going to be, it looks promising, I'll give it that, and, uh, but I'm a bit sceptical on it, because, Phil Ford's writing it, which I have no problem with, but with Stephen Moffat, and unless you count the day of the Doctor and the time of the Doctor, the last time we got a Dalek story from Stephen Moffat was Asylum of the Daleks. That was absolutely abysmal. And I know that the show's pretty much going in the direction now where it's trying to forget about Asylum, what with the reboot in time and everything, but... Ugh, it's just Moffat. I really hope you've learned your lesson. I really, really do. Because Asylum of the Daleks was absolutely terrible, and I hope you're, you know, I mean, if you've got Phil Ford uh, helping you with this script, and uh, I think he is the main writer actually, is Phil Ford, or if you're helping him, just, just make it good, please. Let Phil Ford do most of the work, and. Yeah, so that's all I can really say. I have a neutral mixed expectations for Into the Dalek, but I really enjoyed Deep Breath. Uh, it's been written by Phil Ford and Stephen Moffat and directed by Ben Wheatley again. So I really look forward to seeing Into the Dalek next week. And uh, I quite enjoyed uh, Deep Breath, like I said a million times before. So. I will see you guys next time. This is Mr. Doctor Who Fan 13 saying word out. And please post a comment. Post a comment on what you thought of Deep Breath. Have you seen it yet? Or have you not seen it yet? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was a mixed bag or whatever? Uh, I'm seeing reactions from all over the place here. Some people thought it was brilliant. Some people thought it was absolutely horrible. And some people thought it was meh. So, yeah, I'm really, I'd be really intrigued to see what I get in the comments of this video. Just uh, people's thoughts on deep breath. So that's going to be that for now. This is Mr. Doctor Fan 13, and I'll see you next week for Into the Dalek.